On Wednesdays, we do our live paint demonstrations. We're starting that up, and every Thursday, whatever we don't get finished on Wednesday, we'll be doing. So this hutch is gonna get painted inside, the new back is gonna be painted, we'll finish the sanding, the ceiling, and the finishing wax. Just a quick recap of yesterday's live. I painted the top with cowgirl coral, cut down with some white swan, and then we brought in the petticoat pink and carried that down the piece. We wanted to make a good lip blend for an easy transition, and then once we got done with the petticoat pink, we carried it on down to apothecary. I added a little bit of farm fresh, and then I layered on some white paint. You can watch the whole video by clicking the link above. It's time to take the back off. So what I've got is I've just got my little trim pry bar. This is a Dasco. I think they're around $10 at Home Depot, most hardware stores. But the nice thing about it is it's really thin. It works really nice to get down in here and pry these up. And I'm just gonna work my way around from the inside here. I like to go around the inside if I can because if I go around the outside, sometimes I'll break chips off the outside because it's thin back there, or what'll happen is a staple will be in real tight, and instead of pushing from here, it'll pull away, and I'll get like a big gouge in my wood backer and have to replace it. When I was pulling the backer off, I had a couple little spots of tear out. You can see where the staple didn't want to let loose. That's okay, I'm just gonna take a little bit of glue, just take a couple minutes, glue this up. I could go buy like some new beadboard or new backer, but that really starts to cut into our profit on this since we are reselling it. But this will work fine. You can see kind of the darker area here and the lighter area here. That's still gonna be covered by the recess that's cut to insert this backer. Now that the back's off, you can see how easy this is gonna to be to spray the inside of this. So I'm gonna clean up the little bit of mess and drips here with the sander and then I'm gonna spray this. Hopefully, I've got it up against this backdrop. Hopefully, just spraying it like this, if I stay on this backside, none of the paint or overspray will get on the front finish that Jamie worked on yesterday, and then we'll get a nice clean look to the inside of the hutch. So to tie in with the front of the hutch, we're going to be painting the inside with DIY White Swan. Since one of the panes of glass was missing, we went ahead and knocked the other three panes out rather than just replace the one. We're gonna be putting hardware cloth in, and we do this instead of chicken wire a lot of times because it makes it look more like a pie safe look, and we really love that. All right, so this is the tricky part. The hardware cloth comes wound up like this. So I get some gloves. Gloves will save your hands on this with this stuff. So I pull it out a little bit. And then with my hands, I just flatten this as much as I can on this top lip here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of push it out like this. And once you get that pushed out, you can stand on it a little and unroll it and just walk it back. And this works pretty good for flattening it out. That's the easiest way I've found. The panels that I'm cutting need to be 47 inches long. So I'm just gonna cut it right here. And that's, that's my mark essentially. And I'm just using some side cutters, pliers will work. It's kind of difficult to get down in here sometimes. You'll see me in a minute here, I'll get the grinder out and just cut these panels out with that. I need four panels 8 inches wide and 47 inches long. Alright, got my hardware cloth cut out. I want to just make sure that the bottom is sitting where it's going to go. So now I got my sharpie marker out. Okay, so I'm just going to give a little extra and just kind of go around about half an inch and that'll work there about half an inch around because there's a little recess back up in behind there so it's kind of hard to see the marker doesn't show up real well on this hardware cloth 
but I'm just going to take this and cut that detail out of the top. And I've, I've done away with the grinder. It's time for some precision work right here. And I just need this to be, to fit enough up in there so that it can sit flush. It's not too bad to fit this up in here, but you just, it just takes a little bit of doing. The wires want to catch on things, the little ends and stuff. Make sure you got your gloves on. Just sliding this up in. Okay. So that's all the way up in the top, no exposed edges. Next, I'm gonna check to make sure I've got enough length that I didn't mess up my cut getting down here to the bottom. Looks like we're good on that. Okay, so I'm gonna start stapling it. I've got some bows and things. What I'll do is I will start stapling it up at the top and then I'll work my way down and I'll get rid of this little bubble and bulge. And that way, if I get to the bottom and I've got too much, I can just cut that off. I've got my 18 gauge pneumatic staple gun loaded up with half inch staples. If you don't have access to that, you can use the handheld. It will hold this hardware cloth in really well. When you go to staple this in, there's a routered lip right in here on the outside. You don't want to blow through that. So you want to kind of staple at an angle. So this way or into the side here. Was able to save the trim. And that's just gonna go right up in there like that. And that'll help my staples keep from blowing through too. Still gonna go kind of at an angle. Now, as I go, I'm just pulling this tight, making sure that there's no wrinkles in it. All right, got that done. Took about 10 minutes to fit it in, staple it up and save the trim. So a little bit of time involved, but it looks really nice and clean. Time to put the backer on again. It's painted, dried up. The back is all on and attached. Now that I've opened these doors, I gotta get where the sprayer wouldn't reach. I would normally just spray this down, but I don't wanna cover up any of Jamie's fun paint job on the front. I've got the French round. This is a new brush called the Little Frenchy, and it does the same thing as the French round. It's great for getting in little cracks and corners and things, but it's a little smaller, so you can do even more detail with it. The next step is going to be hand sanding. Normally I use an orbital, but I don't want to go too far and I, I want a little bit more control. So I've got a sanding block that's 220 and we're going to go over the entire piece, smooth it out, bring some of the underneath colors through and then see where we're at there. So before we put on any black or dark wax, which I haven't decided what I'm using yet, we're gonna go ahead and seal it so that way we'll be able to control the wax a little more and it won't dirty up my piece. We're using Sweet Pickens Top Coat and we're just gonna spray it on. You're gonna notice as we spray this on that the colors are really gonna pop. Uh, with the clay-based paint, it lightens up when it dries and then it gets darker when you seal it. <laughs> oh my gosh, this took way longer to finish than I thought. I think it was all the hand sanding and like that took a long time because this is a big piece. Yeah, that and just all the little details, putting in the uh, hardware cloth took, took a little while to do. And then we couldn't find knobs that were good and the knobs that we had were too big. Just all the little stuff added up to be a whole day's work. Well, also we painted the, sprayed the inside, we took the back off, sprayed that, did some repairs to the back when we took it off. So that's always fun. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think it turned out pretty amazing and it looks nothing like what it looked like before. But be sure not to leave because we're going to give you some close-ups 
because in this the beauty is in all the details and the layer and the textures and you can't really see that from far away so we've yeah. got lots of close-up pictures in there for you here's a rundown of all the products that i used if you're interested go to jamierayvintage.com and you can achieve this look with diy white swan cowgirl coral petticoat pink farm fresh apothecary plum did i am I missing anything uh sweet pickens top coat oh we sealed it with sweet pickens top coat that's the whole list. If you'd like to see more videos like this where we're doing them live and then finishing them up the next day, please share the video. It helps us out a lot. It helps us create more content for you. Make sure you're commenting below on what you want to see us do live on our Wednesday videos because we're going to try to go live every Wednesday at a specific time. We'll make sure you all know. To be announced. <laughs> yeah. And that way we can get projects done real time with people commenting, asking questions and you can see exactly the process and how long it takes without any editing. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.